Welcome to Health Management Information Systems, Consumer Health Informatics. This is Lecture B. This lecture offers definitions of personal health records, or PHRs, describes the role of PHRs and their implications within healthcare, and discusses the challenges of consumerism in health information systems. The objectives for this lecture are to Describe the emergence of personal health records and their implications for patients, healthcare providers, and health systems, and discuss how consumerism influences the ongoing development and use of health information systems. This lecture begins with a definition of the personal health record. The National Alliance for Health Information Technologies report, defining key health information technology terms, defines a PHR as an electronic record of health-related information on an individual that conforms to nationally recognized interoperability standards and that can be drawn from multiple sources while being managed, shared, and controlled by the individual. While similar to the electronic health record, a key difference is the last bullet. That is, the record is managed, shared, and controlled by the individual. The control includes who can see or use the information in the PHR. It is important to distinguish between a patient portal provided by a healthcare organization through their EHR and a PHR. A patient portal is provided by the hospital, clinic, or integrated delivery system and is configured and managed by the healthcare provider. In contrast, a PHR is managed as much as possible by the patient. Given that key differences exist, the content of the PHR will have some similar pieces, but also have different components than a patient's legal medical record. According to the American Health Information Management, AHIMA, a PHR should include personal identification, including name and birth date, people to contact in case of emergency, names, addresses, and phone numbers of healthcare providers, for example, primary care physician, dentist, and specialists, health insurance information, living wills, advanced directives, or medical power of attorney. PHR content should also include organ donor authorization, a list and dates of significant illnesses and surgical procedures, current medications and dosages, immunizations and their dates, allergies or sensitivities to drugs or materials, such as latex, important events, dates, and hereditary conditions in your family history. The final portions of a PHR identified by AHIMA are results from a recent physical examination, opinions of specialists, important test results, such as eye and dental records, correspondence with provider or providers, current educational materials or appropriate web links relating to health issues, information imported from other systems, such as patient portals. These data can be imported using standards such as Consolidated Clinical Data Architecture, CCDA, any other information, such as exercise regimen, any herbal medications taken, and any counseling received. While the PHR is an individual's electronic record of health-related information, a PHR system is an application that makes available the functionality to capture, store, and process this information, as well as manage and share it, thereby achieving the goals for having a PHR in the first place. Health Level 7 International, or HL7, published a PHR system functional model draft standard for trial use in 2008. According to HL7's website, HL7 is an ANSI-accredited standards developing organization dedicated to providing a comprehensive framework and related standards for the exchange, integration, sharing, and retrieval of electronic health information that supports clinical practice and the management, delivery, and evaluation of health services. HL7, 2011, Paragraph 1. As stated on HL7's wiki, the PHRSFM defines the set of functions for a personal health record, PHR systems, and offers guidelines that facilitate health information exchange among different PHR systems and between PHR and electronic health record systems. 
The HL7 PHR system functional model contains three sections. The personal health functions, supportive functions, and information infrastructure functions. The National Alliance for Health Information Technologies report, defining key health information technology terms, defines health information exchange as the electronic movement of health-related information among organizations, according to nationally recognized standards. Both a PHR and a PHRS are still somewhat uncharted waters. However, there is a growing consumer health care movement which is being helped by the passage of the American Recovery and Reinvestment Act of 2009, ARRA. One of ARRA's core principles is patient-centered care with emphasis on consumer access to information and direct physician-to-patient information. The personal health record has several main roles. They are to help consumers make informed health care decisions. PHR content is drawn from multiple sources, not just from a single healthcare provider. Having a PHR helps individuals better manage their health and healthcare services and make informed healthcare decisions. Engage consumers in their care. Creating a PHR is not an easy process. Consumers who have gathered health and wellness information and created a PHR are likely to be involved in the healthcare process be more engaged in the decisions they face, and have improved communications with their providers. A PHR is a tool to assist them in managing the information that is paramount to self-care and self-management. Supply information to healthcare providers. PHRs are a communication tool and may contain information that would aid the provider when determining the best treatment. A PHR can help bridge an information gap between what a single healthcare provider may know and the total picture. For example, a patient new to a physician practice provides access to her PHR, which contains information about recent health services and conditions. Having this data helps to avoid an order for tests already performed, saving both time and money. Integrate the delivery of health care and place the consumers at the center of their care. PHRs can support the shift from episode-based care to a more holistic view where, instead of health records centered around the provider, there are patient-centered records. Overall, a PHR is significant in that it will likely increase public understanding of HIT. PHRs also have implications for consumers, healthcare providers, and, if used, the sponsoring organization. The consumer perspective is examined first. The issues consumers are most often concerned about and their implications are what should go into a PHR. The AHIMA website mentioned previously recommended certain content be included. However, the health-related information that is housed with the provider can take time and be difficult to obtain, resulting in an incomplete record. What format should be used? The options are paper-based, personal computer-based, internet-based, and portable storage devices, such as smart cards, memory sticks, cellular phones, and PDAs. If internet-based, they are either tethered or untethered. According to Falrenholtz and Buck, a tethered PHR is a subset of data compiled by a provider, other healthcare entity such as a health plan, or an employer promoting wellness among employees. The individual can access and update the tethered PHR. An untethered PHR is controlled by the individual who signs up for an Internet-based service. The individual provides his or her health information or sends pertinent documents to the PHR vendor to be filed in the record. These services allow password-protected access to records anywhere, anytime, via an Internet connection. Who should have access? Consumers want assurances that the private information they share is used only for specific purposes and that it is secure. What should be shared? While it is true that the content of the PHR is controlled by the individual, consumers may be reluctant to include sensitive information, such as mental disorders, because of fear of disclosure to employers. However, leaving out such information would be risky, as the provider would not be aware of and therefore not be able to take into consideration such problems in the creation of a treatment plan. Where should the information be stored? There are lots of storage options. 
They include, but are not limited to, a health insurance plan, hospital or medical practice, employer, government, or a company offering a PHR over the Internet, such as Microsoft's Health Vault. The main implications of deciding where to store the information is keeping it private and secure. However, there is also the creation of a partnership with the sponsoring organization and the reliance that when the information is needed, it will be available. In addition, concerns exist over data loss due to a sponsoring organization going out of business. PHR implications for healthcare providers are explored next. The issues providers are most often concerned about and their implications include the following. The first issue is with regards to the use of the PHR in patient care. Providers have concerns over the consequences of using information when it comes from a source other than their own. Providers may be reluctant to use it without assurances the records are that of the patient being seen and not that of someone else, and that the information is reasonably accurate, complete, and up-to-date. Clinicians may also feel a patient who presents with a PHR puts them in the position of having to make judgments on the validity of the information contained in it. A second issue is the impact on workflow. In this instance, the implication is an impediment on the established workflow. Incorporating PHR information into the delivery of care is not an easy process to implement into current workflows without impacting physician productivity. Much depends on the patient's choice of format and storage media. There is also a lack of recognition in the way of compensation for any work associated with the usage of a PHR in providing patient care. A third issue providers have with PHRs involves sharing and exchanging information. Part of the PHR definition is the need to conform to nationally recognized interoperability standards. Without such standards, sharing content among disparate systems is not possible. Certified EHRs are required to be able to export health information in portable formats, such as CCD or CCDA, and PHRs can typically import that information readily. Many providers and support staff are not familiar with how to export or send this information to patients, and this can lead to frustration. The final group we will review are the sponsoring organizations. There are many types of sponsoring organizations. They include, but are not limited to, a health insurance plan, health system, hospital or medical practice, employer, government, or a company offering a PHR over the Internet, such as Microsoft's Health Vault. The issues organizations who sponsor PHRs are most often concerned about and their implications include keeping the PHR private and secure. Only those authorized by the patient should have access to the PHR. A data security and or privacy breach could mean legal issues for the organization. If the sponsored organization is a covered entity, as defined in the HIPAA rules, the PHR must be part of risk assessment and appropriate safeguards implemented as per the security rule. Organizations also have to ensure reliability of the system housing the PHR. A partnership is formed with the patient and the sponsoring organization. There is an expectation that, when the information is needed, it will be available to the patient and authorized healthcare providers. Ability to export as well as import information. Seamless integration is the goal, but requires much work on the part of the sponsoring organization to connect disparate systems. Use of standardized permissions and exchange standards are key. The PHR is just one consumer tool in the larger picture of healthcare consumerism. According to Aetna, healthcare consumerism is a movement that encourages individuals to become more involved in and take more responsibility for making smart healthcare decisions, managing their health benefits dollars, and maintaining their overall health status. Enabled by the increasing use of information technology, particularly health information systems, Consumers are helping to transform healthcare into a patient centric system. Needham Bauer provided a perspective on the health consumerism movement by stating Once passive recipients of medical care, patients are increasingly regarded as active consumers and potential critics with the right to certain standards of service. 
including the right to full information, to be treated with respect, and to be actively involved in decision-making about treatment. Some of the benefits of consumerism in the ongoing development and use of health information systems include health consumerism can be seen as a catalyst for the development of patient-centric health information systems. Health IT can bring together all the stakeholders, including the consumer, health plan, and healthcare provider, where information can be shared and used to the advantage of all. Consumerism also has the potential to increase the adoption and use of health information systems. More and more consumers look to the Internet for healthcare information, resulting in a more educated consumer, arming them with information about healthcare choices and the fiscal ramifications as a result of those choices. As a result of becoming more discerning purchasers of healthcare, consumers may demand a higher level of quality and lower costs from suppliers. Healthcare providers are responding in a number of ways to this movement. For example, Mayo Clinic recently formed the Mayo Clinic Center for Social Media, which will utilize communication tools to help patients and improve healthcare. Some of the challenges of consumerism in the use of health information systems include HHS, in their report, Healthy People 2010, defined consumer health information as information designed to help individuals understand their health and make health-related decisions for themselves and their families. While this may sound relatively simple, the challenge is having the needed information to be able to evaluate the information technology needed to integrate consumer health information into existing information systems. As consumers take a proactive role in managing their care, resources such as portals to consumer-focused healthcare databases, online health and drug encyclopedias, e-newsletters, and even tools to evaluate whether an illness or condition necessitates a visit to a healthcare provider are becoming a part of the healthcare landscape and create challenges in using and integrating various health information system applications. Content will need to be understandable to consumers filtered to meet their needs, and the information provided easily accessed from a trusted source. Health information system development will need to consider the consumer perspective, keeping in mind the varied experiences, needs, and abilities of end users, and design in such a way as to improve the consumer engagement experience, medical outcomes, and the healthcare decision-making process. This concludes Lecture B of Consumer Health Informatics. This lecture defined personal health record and the role of PHRs. PHRs are similar to EHRs, except they are managed, shared, and controlled by the individual. They have multiple roles, such as engaging consumers in their care and placing the consumers at the center of their care. PHRs also have implications for consumers, healthcare providers, and if used, the sponsoring organization. The PHR is but one consumer tool in the larger picture of healthcare consumerism, which is impacting the development and use of health information systems and consumer health informatics.